turn one soul ring. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing we do our mic checks before we hit record because uh, I wouldn't want the listeners to hear what I just heard. <laughs> <laughs> they, they might they might think something's wrong with us. <laughs> yeah, they might if they don't already. Um, all right, hello everybody, and welcome to Turn One Soul Ring. I'm Kevin. Hey, I'm Eric, and I'm Riley. And today on the show, we're going to be reviewing the new cards contained in the Call Time Commander pre-constructed decks and give a bit of a review on the decks themselves. Um, before we get to that, though, Eric, how can listeners get in touch with us? Listeners, you can find us over on Instagram, at Terminals or in the podcast. Uh, you can also send us some <clears throat> nice words of wisdom or anything that you liked about our show. Yeah. Encouragement, yes. Uh Terminal Soaring the Podcast at gmail.com. And then uh, we do post everything on YouTube. Search up uh, Terminal Soaring the Podcast to find us the easiest. And uh, if, you, uh, if you like what we do here with the show, uh, we have one of those Patreon pages. So you can definitely go check us out over there. It's uh, patreon.com slash turn one soul ring. Thank you very much. That's right. So uh, we're going to start off with Azorius Fortel deck today and then we'll get to the Golgari deck and we're just going to start off with each deck with the new cards so we're just going to go through them in in alphabetical order starting off with the commanders um, and then we'll get to the sort of the financial value of these decks and how they synergize without going into too much detail we don't want this to be a, a two-hour episode let's start off with Raynar Raynar the ever watchful what is this deck called, Kevin? Oh, yes. Thank you. It is called <laughs> Phantom Premonition. Phantom Premonition. Ooh. So we have Raynar the Ever Watchful at the helm here. And like the other iterations of these decks, we don't have uh, lieutenant commanders like we normally get in the um, the dedicated commander pre-con product that we get every year. And, you know, good news. We recently found out that we will be getting another one this year. So that's nice. I was worried we were just going to be stuck with these until they stopped selling well or they kept selling well and wizards were just like you know we're gonna stop printing these but anyway i digress <laughs> so reynard the ever watchful is a two three legendary spirit warrior for two a white and a blue he has flying and vigilance and the first card you foretell each turn costs zero to foretell and whenever you exile one or more cards from your hand and or permanence from the battlefield create a one one white spirit creature token with flying so what do you guys think about this one? Uh, I like the design that they chose with it. So they wanted to, you know, foretell is a new mechanic. Let's have something that bases off of that. But we do also get value off of this just by exiling things from the battlefield as well. So it's not just caring about foretell. And I think that really adds a lot of power to the card itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, very true. I And like the... Um... The zero foretell cost each turn, like that's extremely powerful. It kind of reminds me of Kadena's, um, what was it, Slinking Sorcerer, the Morph Commander from a couple years back. Oh, totally. uh, the zero cost for your first Morph creature. That also drew you a card, which was much better than this. But I think this is sort of a may, maybe a more fair version of, of that kind of effect. Yeah, I mean, notably, you can only foretell on your turn uh, just by default, like unless you have something like Cosmos Charger that lets you foretell on other turns. Uh, but just as default, foretell can only allow you to put it away on your turn. Oh, can you cast a morph spell at any time? Uh, no, I guess like with with Kadena, like I I remember piloting that deck and using like Leyline of uh, Anticipation. Oh, to allow of you to yeah to cast on on other people's turns. But uh, just like the way the Raynar is is worded, it almost like suggests that you can <laughs> foretell on other people's turns. Um, but you need to jump through it a few extra hoops to do that. And mm -hmm. how 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 would you be able to foretell at instant speed? Because is foretell just you can only do it during your turn? Yeah, you can do it anytime during your turn. Okay. Yeah, but uh, like Cosmos Charger, it's a card that was in the the, the base set of Call Time. It doesn't mm -hmm. look like it's in this Commander deck, uh, but it allows you to foretell on other people's turns uh, and for one mana less so foretell for one yeah he, he's a very very cool commander um you know the bench for foretell is is pretty shallow right now so there's not a ton 
the, you know, there are more cards that you could add to this deck in terms of foretell, but there's just, like I said, it's, it's a pretty shallow bench at this point. So it's going to be interesting to see how this commander ages if, if foretell becomes more of a permanent mechanic. You know, if not, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's going to be that good, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> So next up, we have Cosmic Intervention. Cosmic Intervention is three and a white for an instant. If a permanent you control would be put into a graveyard from the battlefield this turn, exile it instead. Return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. And it has foretell for one and a white. So this card, uh, I was, we were kind of talking about this before the... Uh, before we started recording, but it sort of reminds me of, of Eerie Interlude a little bit or cards like that that can kind of protect your board. You know, obviously they're different, but, um, you know, this this can be a great way to protect your, your board from a board wipe, uh, for example, to protect your creatures. Um, and if your creatures have entered the battlefield abilities, some or all of them, it's, that's just um, icing on the cake. But uh, what are you guys thinking about this one? Pretty much that, you know board protection is always great and this one is also permanence not just creatures like your interlude is so even like more powerful than that it does cost one more mana but it does also have the foretell built in with it as well so you're probably gonna be able to foretell this and then cast it for only two mana when you really need mm -hmm. it yeah and, it, and in that regard it's kind of cheaper than your interlude right because you're paying it over two turns so your interlude is, mm -hmm. is is two and a white um but yeah definitely yeah. Definitely a cool card. And at this point, uh, I checked before we started recording, at this point, this is the most expensive new card from this this set of, of two commander decks. So It seems yeah. that way. It's kind of nice that it um, just cares about things going to the graveyard and then, you know, exiling it and then coming back. So you can do some fun stuff with, like, sacrifice effects. Um, so you don't necessarily lose the creature right off the bat like eerie interlude will exile it right off the bat um but you can get some extra value even on your turn if you're trying to set something up like if you have some egg egg loops <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> you know, like yeah sacrificing your eggs for value and then bringing them back at the end of turn for more value uh it could be pretty pretty fun yeah oh for sure that's what uh yeah and i didn't think about that right away but that really adds some versatility to this card mm -hmm. yeah we have Ethereal Valkyrie next. It's four white blue for a 4-4 four, four spirit angel with flying. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, draw a card, then exile a card from your hand face down. It becomes foretold. Its foretell cost is its mana cost reduced by two. Uh, I just think this is a great card advantage card. It is, you know, it is expensive for a 4-4 four, four flyer, but you're essentially drawing two cards, um when it enters the battlefield or attacks. Uh, I don't know where I put this, but I, that kind of card advantage is uh, tempting. And then it's also giving us the ability to give like any card possible uh, for tell, which is super cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It would be nice if this card had for tell. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> at, at six mana, it's, it's kind of asking a, a lot, but mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure in this deck in particular, like caring about for tell is, is going to be relevant. Yeah, like, I don't know if I would put this in any other decks just for, like, its mana cost and stuff, but definitely for this deck, it synergizes quite well, being able to give all of your cards foretell. There is some blink synergy happening in this deck. Like, um, Raynar, of course, cares about things being exiled from from the battlefield as well. So just having that extra enter, enter the battlefield draw is, is kind of a nice feature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, like, at least it does something when it does enter the battlefield. Yeah. So you play it, you get something, and then, yeah, you can blink shenanigan it as well, and you're drawing cards, so. We have Hero of Bredegard next. It's two and a white for a 1-1 one, one human warrior. Whenever you exile one or more cards from your hand and or permanence from the battlefield, put a put that many 1-1 one, one counters on Hero of Bredegard. As long as Hero of Bredegard has five or more counters on it, it has flying and is an angel in addition to its other types. And as long as it has ten or more counters on it, it has indestructible and is a god in addition to its other types. Um, you know, th this is sort of like a, a fun card. It's I think it's going to be a scary 11-11 flying indestructible <laughs> angel. But I'm not really sure how often or how quickly, I should say, you're going to get to that point before it gets removed. 
Um, it, it may be quick. I, I'm not really sure with, with this deck or you, you put a few more cards in to make that happen. I don't know that you really want to do that for, for this particular card. But, you know, I, I, I'm not sure how quickly you'd be able to do it is what I'm saying. And I'm not even saying it would get removed by targeted removal. I'm just talking about the incidental kind of removal that happens in this format. Just, you know, board wipes and things like that while it's, you know, like a 3-3 or a 4-4. So, um, yeah, I'm just not really sold on this card yeah it doesn't do anything immediately when it hits the battlefield which is a little bit of a uh, an awkward place to be in a blink deck but uh <laughs> i mean obviously it cares about <laughs> it cares about that stuff uh so mm -hmm. definitely a lot of setup it could it could easily go wrong i don't think i would put all my eggs in this basket but you know interesting yeah. card i'm sure i'm sure you could build around it a little bit more with this in mind and you know make I, a I, decent threat but. Yeah, I think I think they were maybe going to put some kind of enter the battlefield ability on this card, but they clearly ran out of room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have Sage of the Beyond next. It's five blue blue for a five five spirit giant with flying. Spells you cast from anywhere other than your hand cost two less to cast, and it has foretell for four and a blue. Uh this card is good in, you know, there, there's there's quite a few decks where, or quite a few commanders that let us um, exile cards and then cast them from exile. Uh, and this card would be great in any of those decks. You know, it's not just good in a Fertel deck. I'm even thinking about yeah. this for, like, Halden and Paco, where I have all those cards in exile. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I, like this, I like this card in a lot of places. Yeah, I was thinking, I was thinking flashback. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Flashback to yeah, gr yeah, graveyard stuff or uh, totally, yeah, and like a five-five flying threat that you know essentially ramps you. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that, uh, it seems like a pretty decent card. Like at seven mana, I wouldn't be as excited, but the fact that you can foretell it and then cast it for five that makes it a lot more easy to to swallow. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, five five, um, five mana five five flyer is, is is the appropriate mana cost. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was also even thinking of I'm blanking on my commander's name right now, but my Jeskai one. And uh, oh, um, yeah. What is that commander called? Yeah, the, the infinite or whatever. What's her name? Uh, is it Elsha? Uh, Elsha, Elsha. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so because you can uh, obviously cast uh, instant sources from the top of your deck. That's also anywhere other than your hand, and then there are two less, so it's pretty oh, good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, and it's just spells, eh? So even, mm -hmm. like, your artifacts yeah. just become free. <laughs> yeah, right? Like That's pretty cool. Yeah, this is a really solid card. I'm surprised it's not um, on the pricier side in terms of uh, the cost of the single, the value of the single. Yeah, I feel like that's because like the CMC is so high. Yeah. yeah, if it was like if it was like a three mana, two two, it'd be much more playable. Oh, totally. <laughs> Wouldn't it be much of a giant <laughs> at that point. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, would you... you have to make it like a dwarf or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Next up, we have uh, Stoic Farmer, three and a white, for a three three dwarf peasant. When it enters the battlefield, search your library for a basic planes card and reveal it. If an opponent controls more lands than you, put it onto the battlefield tapped. Otherwise, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. And it has foretell for one and a white. So, I, you know, I just, I'm really getting tired of this kind of thing on <laughs> white, white cards. And, like, I really like white. Like, you guys know, I have a mono white commander deck. I like, I like mono white. But, you know, I don't like anything about this card. It has... It has foretell, so it works in this deck. But you know this this kind of catch up, not ramp thing that they keep that they give white or that white has. You know, I, I, it just if they aren't going to give white more real ramp cards, then I'd rather just not see this type of thing on cards at all. And you know, they could have even allowed us to search for any planes card instead of a basic planes card, which yeah. is how I read it initially. I I missed the basic part. And uh, I had I reread it, and I'm like, no, it's garbage. So, <laughs> and like, and that wouldn't even be that overpowered, you know. So you can go get a Mistvel Plains, or you know, it's like that's not that's not great. Like you want to go get a duel or something, or or just a, a basic Plains. So I just don't, you know. Again, it's cool that it has Fertel. It goes in this deck, but you know, I just really don't like anything about this card. 
But Kevin, even if you aren't behind on lands, you still get to search for the land. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is an upside. <laughs> but like, but saying compared that's to an the upside, other ones that do stuff like this, I guess you know what you're right. Yeah, you're but, right. But, but saying that's an upside is still kind of sad. You know? <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of catch up mechanics either. But the nice thing that this card does have going for it is the way that you can sequence um, playing it. Like Fortell adds quite a bit. If this was just like straight up four mana three three that like maybe ramped you uh, planes, uh, then <laughs> I would definitely not be interested. But yeah. on turn two, you know, or even turn one, if you have a soul ring, God bless. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Prayer hand. Turn turn two, foretell it. Uh, turn three comes back before you play your land. You cast this probably ramp out at that point because i'm sure somebody's ha has a third land on on turn three unless you're the first person to play in the game um and you know get some white ramp so it's it's not the worst as far as sequencing goes but like mm. still yeah, i'm enough. not a huge fan of catch-up mechanics for white yeah and uh you know eric to your point that it uh that you get to search no matter what that is that is progress so uh, maybe <laughs> may maybe maybe we're gonna see something you know this maybe maybe this is a step in the right direction. Maybe I maybe I judged it a little too harshly. Well, there is always a price of progress. So. That's right. That's right. He's right. <laughs> yeah. <Ba -dum. laughs> Actually, I just recently uh, found out that I like I, I I I you know I've been I've been researching Canadian Highlander more and more over the past couple months and uh, just trying to like memorize the points list and uh, I was surprised I guess I I guess I'd forgotten or I'd, I'd seen it and I just didn't remember but price of progress is a is a pointed card like it's it's one point I was I was kind of surprised oh, I was kind of surprised by that really yeah but nice. I you know I guess there's a lot of I guess there's a lot of non-basic lands running around <laughs> So next up we have Spectral Deluge. It's four blue blue for a sorcery. Return each creature your opponent's control with toughness X or less to its owner's hand, where X is the number of islands you control, and it has foretell for one blue blue. Um, I like I like this card. It's it's a it's a one sided board clear. Um, it kind of reminds me of Engulf the Shore, where yeah you know exactly. cares about cares exactly. about your islands but this only hits your opponents um it has it also has foretell that's nice um yeah I, I think this is a solid card that can get you out of some hot water or just clear the way for you to win the game if you have a bunch of creatures on the battlefield already yeah i actually think this card is really good just because of its foretell cost because uh we'll probably be foretelling this on a previous turn and then just for like the one of anything in blue blue to get rid of all of your opponent's stuff most likely because mm -hmm. you should have the islands if you're in that kind of deck. Totally, yeah. uh, I think this card's really strong mm -hmm. actually. Yeah, and you're you know, you end up paying less mana with the Fertel. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, it's, it's pretty nice. It's pre pretty cool. I'm, I I'd be more excited running this in a mono blue deck instead of uh, an Azorius deck because <laughs> oh, of course you're, yeah, you're, totally. no doubt, your lands are going to be split, but uh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, they like did it. But they did put twelve islands in this deck, so that's pretty. That's pretty spicy. Do we have any other? Yeah, ones? watch out, you twelve twelve. Oh, you know what? We got glacial floodplain. That's an island. And we got anything else? <laughs> no. Hey, hey, twelve twelve twelve. It'll get that blight steel off the oh, table. Yeah, you know? like, get out of here. Here you go. <laughs> I'm like get turn twenty four. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> all we got. All, all we got is thirteen islands. Okay, all right, still. That's, uh, not not for, not for nothing here. So next up we have. Tales of the Ancestors. This is our last card, new card from the Azorius deck. It's uh, three and a blue for a sorcery. Each player with fewer cards in hand than the player with the most cards in hand draws cards equal to the difference, and you can foretell it for one and a blue. So if you foretell this, you're breaking even. Yeah, this card's kind of interesting. Um, like, blue decks tend to have more cards, so you might be, you know giving some opponents some catch up here <laughs> but uh <laughs> i hope you're not casting in that case <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what's kind of cool about this deck though is that if we are foretelling a lot of cards we may find a situation where we can draw a good amount because you know we've been foretelling cards that we've been drawing and uh, then we can uh, get some decent value off of this card so yeah yeah yeah, yeah sure. i also 
I also think this would be good. Uh, when I saw this card, I immediately thought of Trevor, and uh, that happens to me. Some that happens to me sometimes when I, you know, new cards come out. And uh, yeah, I did too. I immediately <laughs> thought of um, this card in his in his Nekuzar deck. I, I think that I think this card could. I I, I would definitely try it. I, I think it could uh, deal a fair bit of damage. Yeah, that's a good point. Oh, for sure, yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. he could, yeah. he could just fill up his hand and then get everybody else else to draw up and then you know wheel yeah that, that oh, could be pretty yeah. cool yeah yeah so um anyways but otherwise like I'm, I'm sure you could make it work a little bit more in your favor if you are trying to you know either be aggressive or find ways to get your hand size down like quickly in your turn and then just turning around and paying two mana to fill it back up um it could be yeah it could be pretty fun yeah yeah and i i definitely think that's what <clears throat> they want us to do in this deck like to to, uh to eric's point just you know you're foretelling cards and and then you need to fill your hand back up that's that's the situation they they probably envisioned with this card the envisioning in their mind's eye and yeah you have to do it in you have (laughs) to do it in your mind's eye where else do you do it (laughs) (laughs) now let's uh we've, we've talked about the new cards a little bit um we can we'll move on to the financial value so without getting into you know, too many numbers. We're not really numbers guys. At least I'm not a numbers guy. Um, I like numbers. <laughs> both. <laughs> <laughs> so um, both of the decks uh, we're talking about today have been out for a few weeks now. I'm pretty sure like t- two to three weeks. And um, like the previous two versions of, the, of this product, if you were to buy the singles, it would cost you more to build the decks and if you just bought the decks outright like right now on um on mtg goldfish to this the singles for this deck their price is 48.26 and uh that's usd and our price is like you you can go and get this deck at you know one of our local game stores for uh i think like 23 to 25 dollars right now but uh you know my, my point is is that these are still these are still good products to buy obviously for new players but even for established players because the value is there you know yeah uh and then we do have a few key cards that hold uh, some value as well um as you as we were mentioning before uh cosmic intervention is the most expensive new card i think it's also the most expensive card from both of these decks in general Oof, yeah yeah I, six bucks. I think you're right <laughs> and like all of all yeah. of these pre-order prices like these cards on pre-order um were were much more expensive, um, and actually, I think it's interesting because what I think is interesting uh, actually is that the the Golgari deck <clears throat> was much more heavily pre ordered, and um, you know it's it's the it's the deck that is more popular in terms of people buying it, and it was more expensive in terms of the the cards in the deck on pre-order than the Azorius deck. And now the Azorius deck is a little bit more expensive if you wanted to buy the singles and build it. And, uh, you know, like uh, elves are more popular. They're more established. This, this foretell deck, there's like we, like we already mentioned, there's, there's a shallow bench for foretell cards. So, you know, this deck wasn't as popular, but I think what's happened because the, the other deck was purchased so much and, you know, those singles have gotten out into the market. Um, it's made them all, cheaper which is which is nice which is what you want but um you yeah. know it's i just thought that was kind of interesting that this like the elf deck was far and above the um the better value and now they're they're pretty similar in price um but uh yeah you know just goes to show you never never buy never pre-order new cards because <laughs> well sometimes you can still make make out good you can that's yeah that's not true yeah there, you can there was a card that I wanted from uh, Zendikar Rising that I was debating pre-ordering, and I didn't, and then the price spiked big time. I was like, oh, okay. Oh, what card was it? Yeah. Uh, Scourge of the Skyclaves. Oh, really? That card spiked? Yep, because uh, then, like, I was thinking of it for, you know, a good old Death Shadow deck, yeah. but then even, like, some uh, Jun decks and stuff are running it as well because it's just, like, a pretty powerful card. And uh, then I think, like, around that time, not much stuff was being opened. Then so the... They went up to like forty bucks. Wow! Yeah, it's for that dang card. I think it's gone down since then as well. But uh, yeah, sometimes yeah, it's it's still like ten dollars. Yeah. I think I have like at least one of these laying around somewhere. Yeah, I still want to. 
I still got to pick them up for my uh, <laughs> Death Shadow modern modernness. Oh man, I want to go and play modern so bad. Oh, me too. Yeah. Um, you know, besides the new flashy cards, we do have things like Soul Ring and Arcane Signet, which always need to be reprinted, especially Arcane Signet. And it was nice that they gave us the Arc- Arcane Signet back because they took it away for Commander Legends, and and that hurt. But we also have uh, in the Azorius deck Windfall, Ghostly Prison, uh, Restoration Angel isn't so good anymore because it's going to get reprinted in Time Spiral Remastered, uh, and Eerie Interlude is also in this deck for some higher value reprints. Um, what did you guys have for shout outs? There's also an Arcane Artisan, which is <laughs> also worth over a dollar. Oh, here we go. Yeah, <laughs> Battle Bond Original. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Riley's one of Riley's favorites, Burnished Heart. There you go. <laughs> uh, I haven't <laughs> I haven't cast a Burnished Heart in a while. I feel like it's had its day in the sun. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's a little too slow now. I feel like it's it's gone by the wayside. Um, that may be a hot take, but I'm just gonna call out. Uh, I'm gonna call out Storm Herd here. Nice. Uh, not not for the value, but just for the memes. <laughs> Uh, Back. Stor- <laughs> Storm Herd's uh, <laughs> eight, eight white white for a sorcery create X one one white Pegasus creature tokens with flying where X is your life total. <laughs> I've I've seen this win games. I have. <laughs> I I haven't taken out of I haven't taken it out of my Elsha deck. Like it's still in there. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, ten mana. Yeah, but then it's like you're at, you're at a spot, right? You're like, oh, I have twenty one, one one flyers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've definitely seen Trev like win games with this card in uh, his uh, Eily, um What is it? Something Pilgrim deck, the uh, the the Orzov Life Gain deck. I've definitely seen that. That was that was a long game. <laughs> um, yeah, but we got to. It's it's cool to see Brago in here. Um, and then, like, one of my favorites, the Mist Meadow Witch. Mm-hmm. I really like the Mist Meadow Witch. It's, like, one of anything and then a, a split uh, white or blue mana. And then it's uh, it's just a 1-1, one, one, but you can pay two of anything, a white and a blue, and you exile target creature and then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So in a deck like this, having a mana sink to be able to flicker stuff uh, is really powerful. So I'm glad they threw the Mist Meadow Witch in there for you. Actually, I used to, uh, when I had my Brago deck together, I used to use Mist Meadow Witch to return my Gilded Drake uh, that was under somebody else's control to my mm. hand um, or, or nice. to the to the battlefield. And then with with um, with Brago, I could blink it and then take something else. That, that's what I did now that I'm remembering. Yeah. I do I, I do stuff. not miss piloting that deck. It was it was definitely didn't make me feel good about <laughs> myself. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, w- one thing that does seem to stand true about these commander decks is that like, even though they come out side by side uh, alongside the, the core set itself, um, there's some like key cards in the set, like Call Time, for example, that I wish they would have included in this pre-constructed deck. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I mentioned it at the top of the episode, but like Cosmos Charger, Cosmos Charger would be perfect for this deck. And Obviously, it's something that you can look to upgrade the deck with, but uh, I imagine that's probably why they've kind of not included some, you know, like <laughs> obvious <laughs> cards that that should be in here. But nonetheless, yeah, it's kind of like-, I, like Cosmos Charger. I think is like the the one slam dunk that you should put in this deck immediately. Yeah, definitely. Um, as well, like Sun Titan is always uh, a really strong card. Oh yeah, Sun Titan. So is having in that here. in this deck is really yeah. good. Yeah, mm-hmm. below a dollar now. I remember when this card was like five bucks. Yeah, no kidding. So, Sun Titan is just good, good value. It is. It's fantastic. Good. Yeah, one of, one of the better Titans for sure. For sure. Uh, and then of course, Eerie Interlude is always a good card for blinking, and then it's also another one to save our board. We were already talking about it when we were talking about Cosmos Intervention, so it is nice that they threw that one in mm-hmm. here because that would have been a, a weird one. Uh, and then. If you have some sort of board wipage as well, uh, it's cool to see Curse of the Swine. Yeah, I love that card. Underplayed for sure. Totally. So it's X and blue, blue uh, for a sorcery. You get to exile X target creatures. And for each creature exiled this way, its controller creates two, uh, two, two green board creature token. So you can get rid of anything and then they just get a two, two and it exiles. So it gets rid of indestructible and stuff like that. Uh, this card can actually be pretty strong in certain situations. Oh yeah. So um, 
A couple of cards I'd like to mention here. Uh, well, before I do that, the land base in these decks. You know, it it always it always <laughs> it, it, it could it could always be better. Uh, it is nice that they threw in the uncommon lands from Kaldheim that are that are the you know color coordinated, and also the um, the dual snow land um, that that mm-hmm. is that is a plains island. I, we already mentioned it. Uh, there's a lot of basics, which is good, but. Uh, yeah, you know, just throw in some of the crappier, um, um, you know, dual lands that, you know, maybe s- only sometimes come into the battlefield tapped. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's not bad. It could be worse. Um, but the what I really like to see here is the the diamonds we have marble diamond and sky diamond and these are these are the kind yeah. of mana rocks just like signets or or felwar stone like the two mana mana rocks that i always want to see in commander decks especially in these colors that don't have access to land-based mana ramp or at least not a not a lot of it uh light green uh you know it's it's too bad that we had to wait for i i think they only put these in these decks because they were just reprinted in commander legends um because these needed these have needed to be reprinted for quite a while i think the last time these were printed was in commander 2014 so it's that like seven years ago um so well, they're they're reprinted in commander legends as well Right, but 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 yes. yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. So like they were reprinted in Commander Legends, and so they threw them in here. But I think if they hadn't been reprinted in Commander Legends, I don't know when the next time we would have seen these would oh, would have yeah. been because yeah. it, it had been so long. Um, and I feel like Commander Legends like just came out. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's nice to see. It's also nice to see Swiftfoot Boots. Uh, I feel like that's not a card that's always included in Commander decks, and and I think more times than not you're you're correct to put it in a deck so uh just those little things it's nice to see yeah it's also really nice having like these diamonds and stuff because this deck is a little mana hungry so it was nice that they threw the uh you know the artifact ramp in there for Mm -hmm. you yeah yeah and it's you know it's budget friendly like mana ramp that makes sense for the curve that you're working with because yeah you know on turn two you you cast a, a marble diamond and turn three, you can cast Raynar, which is exactly where you want to be with your ramp. You want to be able to think about the the turns in which you're going to be casting your spells. Oh, yeah. Exactly, yeah. So if we're able to cast Raynar on turn three, and then we can foretell something, uh, we can have a really nice turn four. Oh, you know what? What I was saying about uh, Stoic, Stoic Farmer, uh, I stand by that, but... Uh, I also see. I also <laughs> see. We've got core cartographer in here. This is yes. this is a white ramp card. It's three and a white for a two two. Uh, core scout. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a planes card. Put it onto the battlefield tapped. Then shuffle your library. God, it feels good. Yep. Feels good. <laughs> uh, Almost straight up better than the. Uh, if only it had foretell. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. Well, I. I'm surprised there's no solemn in here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which there's no solemn simulacrum, which would be perfect in a blink deck. Yeah, and it and, yeah. and it was reprinted not too long ago. Like I think that's part of it too. Like with these decks, like you know they don't want to make them too high value in terms of the singles. So if cards have recently be, been reprinted, I think they're more inclined to put them in these decks. Uh, and there's a lot of there's quite mm-hmm. a few cards in here from Commander Legends. Um, but yeah, core cartographer also used to run that in my Brago deck. This is kind of making me want to put that deck back together, but um, you know, it's not <laughs> it's not it's not fun for you guys. So uh, I don't want to I don't want to play it. I've evolved. I've evolved. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bring it back. Bring, <laughs> bring it back. bring it back. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I think I th- I'll play against. Oh, it. I know you. I know <laughs> you would. I know. I think I think I'll I think I'll let Trevor be the the stacks player he he enjoys it and you know i i I just you know i just i just don't i just don't enjoy stacks playing piloting stacks the way i used to and you know i think if you don't enjoy something you shouldn't do it i you know i really enjoy like kozilek or unash where i'm just smashing face you know i just i'm a simple man yeah yeah no you know sometimes combat is just fun yeah you know you just gotta just gotta go back to the basics so um (laughs) is there um 
should we i think we can move on now to kind of how these decks you know how they're going to play right out of the box like you know i guess on a on a scale of i don't like to do scales but i don't know what are you guys thinking like where um where do you see this deck being played or or how do you think how do you think things are going to turn out if you bring this deck to a table well i think again it's just like it's where the product's positioned right it is kind of like a starter deck yeah uh but in general i think the uh the synergies work out really well the one thing i do like about this deck a lot is because they're trying to push foretell and the commander kind of shows it off but then there are other cards again like the hero of redegard and stuff where it's like not just foretell but also if things get exiled you're still getting that value so it's not just about the foretell and that really helps the deck uh have more power to it Mm -hmm. yeah you could really do like a uh, you could kind of shift it into like a exile kind of theme to get those one one spirit tokens with flying and and put a few more like favorable winds type effects in here or um yeah i mean like like you got that cloud goat ranger Mm -hmm. keep blinking that thing yeah (laughs) yeah and you just you just start you just start swinging face um yeah that could be that could be pretty decent i don't know that there's i mean if there were more i guess there's quite a few spells i'm even thinking like possibly with a few more um instants and sorceries and a uh what's his name Talran sky summoner getting getting pushing out more tokens that way but um anyways that's just off the top of my head yeah i think i think overall foretell lends itself to uh filling or fitting into your curve quite nicely Mm -hmm. Uh, just being able to like on on any turn where you you're going to be somewhat mana inefficient at least you can turn around and foretell a card to use up that mana so i think the 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 core mechanic that this deck is focused on is going to play out really nicely but overall the the curve seems a little top heavy yeah um i think it might be a little clunky at times but it is a, a i think overall an entry point into the format right so anybody who's interested in getting into commander like of course this is the product that they're designing for you it's a a nice little jumping off point yeah and it's very 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 affordable yeah Mm -hmm. oh yeah so i also have to mention because i just think this card is a real wet blanket but they did have to throw the (laughs) nico defies destiny in here and it's just like yeah they did didn't they uh, (laughs) <laughs> yeah, we may get one foretell card back, but I just uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it, yeah, it's, okay. it's pretty medium, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> it, it kind of fits the theme. Uh, I just thought that card would be so much better than when I played with it. I was like, mm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a little underwhelming. <laughs> I mean, in limited particularly. But. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, the plus side of commander is you have a little bit more time because generally speaking, you're you're not going to be. You know, ganged up on immediately. <laughs> so if yeah. you're playing Nico defies destiny, I don't think you're the biggest threat at the table. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nope. Yeah, it's not like in it's not like in one v one formats where you get ganged up on immediately. <laughs> it's like, guy, could you give me? Who's gang up could on me? You give me like two turns, please, to get my thing going here. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> um, I you know. Why are you hitting me? <laughs> it's like Tarmogoyf on turn two. It's like, what are you? What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Why are you like this? I also want to mention too that uh, the new art on Ghostly Prison is is very cool. It's 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 Ooh, nice, nice to get some new art on that Ghostly Prison. Yeah. The, the the scary like cat folk guy was a little um, a little bit much for me. This is nice. <laughs> So, uh, shall we move on to the new cards from the Golgari deck? Mm. Shall we? It, uh, yes. it, is, it is called Elven Empire. And, uh, it's good stuff. First up, we have... What are we doing here? Who's leading the Empire? It's Lathril, Blade of Elves. And... Uh, I think it's uh, I think it's a lady, but it could go either way. Um, it is a elf. It's a legendary elf noble two three, for two black green with menace. When it deals combat damage to a player, create that many one one green elf warrior creature tokens, and you can tap it to tap ten untap elves you control. Each opponent loses ten life, and you gain ten life. Uh, this is a super cool 
commander uh, you know i think uh it 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 synergizes really well on its own it doesn't it doesn't need a lot of support given enough time it can create those 10 elves um so i i really like that it's not overpowered like some commanders that synergize with themselves that we've seen you know in the last while like the like chulain or corvold those synergize really well with themselves but they're a, mm -hmm. a bit much and uh, they're really easy to break uh, i should say because uh, you know riley we, we showcased riley's um chulain companion deck on the show and that deck isn't overpowered that deck can win like it's it's a very it's a very good deck but um you know it's it's like a fair it's a it's a fair version of a chulain deck um so yeah i, I you know, and and even even at that like chulain <laughs> at, even at my curve starting at three mana like it still seems gross to yeah, pilot. <laughs> yeah it does it's very it's a, yeah it's, it's a very good deck it's a very good deck um so yeah, I think this, I, and I think that this the the activated ability on this card, uh, you know, the tap ten untapped elves you control, you know, I I love I love to see that on cards, um, like we just said in our last episode, you know, t tapping untapped dwarfs, um, you know, you want to see that because it means it doesn't matter if the creature is currently affected by summoning sickness, uh, but yeah, this ability, each opponent loses ten life and you gain ten life, that's just gonna kill people. Yeah. Yeah and kill him yeah. dead yeah that's, that's nothing to shy away mm -hmm. from like that's that's actually kind of scary <laughs> yeah. yeah you just put a seed born muse in here oh, oh yeah have a good day that's... <laughs> <laughs> just a turn cycle and everybody's yeah. dead yeah right totally. <laughs> yeah if they can't do anything about it you're absolutely right i didn't even think of that yeah um yeah <laughs> yeah so like you know I, I i think you know i think it's it's reasonably costed for the power and toughness and, and like i said i don't i don't think it's it's overpowered uh, so yeah, I, I really like, I really like this card. It's very, it's very cool. Both both the commanders in this in this um, two commander set are are very cool. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so next up we have Bounty of Skemfar. It's two and a green for a sorcery. Reveal the top six cards of your library. You may put a land card from among them onto the battlefield tapped, and an elf card from among them into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So these cards always kind of give me pause uh, because I'm worried about not hitting something. But what do you guys, how do you guys feel about this one? There, There is definitely the possibility of whiffing for sure. <laughs> There's always <Yeah>. that possibility. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, six is pretty deep. But, uh, you know, of course, if you have elves that you care about in your deck, um or you're which I, building which I think we do towards I hope elves. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then it's basically it, it it's very reminiscent of like a, a cultivate. But yeah, it definitely has more risk than cultivate because cultivate is guaranteed. But uh yeah, it's it's got like cultivate vibes because it's replacing itself with an elf and ramping you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and like in this deck obviously like so we're gonna be looking at the elves and the lands. And so uh, we have 39 elves in the deck and then 37 yeah. lands. So it's a pretty good rate for us to actually hit both cards off of this. Uh, so I think in this deck, like it's uh, positioned pretty, pretty decently. Oh, you know what? That's um, good. Good that you mentioned lands. You reminded me. I wanted to mention this about the last deck. Um, something we've been seeing with commander decks for quite a while now. I feel like since we started this show, um, is the land count has been like 38 to 40. And you know, I feel like for most decks, that's that's too many. So I just wanted to mention that as a plus for these decks, uh, the land count seems a, a bit more reasonable at 36 and 37. I know it's like one, like 37 uh, to 38 is one land, but I, I you know, it's, it's a fair difference. I think that's actually a really good point, especially for the uh, Phantom Premonition deck. Mm -hmm. uh, they may have actually like in the past, we would have seen it with like 40, 40 lands but this time they decided to actually give us the artifact ramp instead which is the much better route to take mm -hmm. there absolutely yeah yeah it's like they're giving new players more credit isn't that nice hey <laughs> <laughs> so uh next up we have crown of scam far it's two green green for an aura enchants a creature enchanted creature gets plus one plus one for each elf you control and has reach and you can pay two and a green to return it from your graveyard to your hand. 
Um, so that second ability right there is just fantastic. That that you know almost endless recursive ability. Yeah, and obviously since we have an elf deck, this is really going to pump whatever creature you throw it onto. Yeah, like the command, like the commander, I, <laughs> and then you get you get more elves that you can tap to uh, deal or loss of life rather, not deal damage. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like it exactly with Lathril, but otherwise I'm not a big fan of this card. Yeah, I just think it's it's too clunky mm-hmm. of a cost. Yeah, the, exactly for, for this kind of yeah. Effect. That's what I was thinking too. The uh, the cost uh, of you know to keep it going is is a lot. It's, it's seven mana. Yeah, but I mean, if if it had trample, if it gave the creature trample I instead think of reach, I'd, I'd feel a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, it's strange that it that it is reach instead of uh, an evasive ability because you know you're yeah. this the uh, cards that that buff creatures they I don't know about you guys that but they make me want to attack with them whereas Swing whereas in. reach whereas <laughs> reach it's yeah. like give the creature a big butt and 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 give it reach you know like give walls reach you know elves yeah. don't need reach I don't, I don't know. Well, yeah, like I, I guess elves generally will have reach because you know they're archers or whatever. But like, yeah, what, what about a crown gives you right. reach? Yeah, you know, like I don't. What, I don't what about a crown gives you trample? I don't know. It's just big <laughs> head. <you know>? <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> no, I think I think that's what they're going on because elves do have like some elves do have reach, so they're probably like, oh, you know, in the flavor of elves, it it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I also maybe her power is far reaching. Oh. or she's you know she's she's <laughs> sitting on high right the crown is you know yeah. uh, like you know it's like you guys saw game of thrones yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you get it i wonder if they were also a little worried if if this did give trample and then just having that attached to lathril because lathril already has a menace as well just kind of like really is yeah. powerful she'd be a house yeah. yeah she would be yeah but maybe they're like ooh, that's great I mean, it's one card how often are you gonna draw it come on <laughs> yeah yeah, and like four mana aura, like <laughs> yeah, it's you know, yeah. there's risk involved with it. Even with the return ability, like returning it from your graveyard, it's still like that's seven mana to get this effect. I don't know. And then to get and to get <laughs> it back onto the battlefield, you're it's four more. So the the round trip is eleven mana. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Like I guess if you cast it, they remove Lathril, you bring it back, you try to cast it again. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's risky. Next up, we have Ruthless Winnower. It's three black black for a 4-4 elf rogue. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player sacrifices a non-elf creature. Um, so this is a, this card's this card's great. Um, it's just going to um, it, it's just going to whittle down your opponent's boards uh, while you keep swinging in with elves. Yeah. It's kind of like a shieldred for elves. I was about to say that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, it would have been. Yeah, I wish it was more like that. And then it, you could also bring back an elf creature from your graveyard. Yeah, come on. Like that w- it's come it's, on, ruthless it's five forward. mana. You couldn't have thrown another <laughs> line of text on there. Come on. Come on. <clears throat> so yeah, I think this will be like targeted for removal, just like you know, all kind of um, you know, like sh- shieldred or. Um, you know, not that it's the same, but but like grave pact and and dictate of of Erebos. Um, but yeah, I think I think this is just a solid way to get rid of your opponent's creatures and just let you do what you want to do, which is attack with your army of elves. Next up, we have Pact of the Serpent. They're holding hands. That's nice. It's one Aww. black black for a sorcery. <laughs> Choose a creature type. Target player draws X cards and loses X life, where X is the number of creatures they control of the chosen type. Um, I don't really like cards like this. I think they're kind of win more. Yeah. I, I like it in in elves, like with Lathril. Like I think I think her alone with her damage ability is, is going to give you enough assurance that you're going to get something out of it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's it it is it is very good in that case where you have a commander that can produce tokens and um, the tokens are the same creature type as the commander. Um, but I, you know, I always yeah. just think of like after a board wipe. 
I, th- I think I'm a little bit of a, yeah. a victim of thinking of like the worst case scenario a, a little too often. <laughs> yeah. Whereas like, you know, some, you know, it's like, let's think about this card's ceiling. And I'm sort of like thinking about, let's think about this card's like basement. Um, so, uh, mm. yeah, you, but, but you're right. That, that is, that is a good point with, it, with, with Lathril. It, it is, um, it is going to draw you some cards and in a, and in a deck like this, like I can tell you from piloting an, an elf stack, like you do need that card that card advantage because you you're just you're just yeah. dumping your hand you you know you're producing so much mana that you're just dumping your hand and you, and you need more um gas on the fire mm-hmm. exactly. and next up we have elder fang venom it's two black green for an enchantment attacking elves you control have death touch and whenever an elf you control dies each opponent loses one life and you gain one life uh I think this is pretty good, uh, especially if you can give your elves trample. You know, they're you know you, you don't you don't want to block, but if you do, um, it's, you know some of the damage is still going to get through. So, and the creatures will die. So it's uh it's, it's win win win. Yeah, again, like in this deck, I think cause if you're making a bunch of elf tokens, people don't want to block your elf token that's going to kill their whatever big creature. So it's also kind of like an evasive thing mm-hmm. as well. Um, they may still mm-hmm. want to block your command or something like that, but you're still getting through with all your other stuff, most likely. Yeah, or you you put uh, you throw a taunting elf in this deck, and then and then and then they have yeah. to block with all their creatures, and they you know you have this on the battlefield, spicy. <laughs> yeah, nice little aristocrats piece. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and like the 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 loss of life isn't uh, something I'm I'm so interested in, but uh, you know it's it's a nice little extra. Yeah, it's nice that it hits each opponent. So next up we have Serpent's Soul Jar. It's two. I don't know why I said it like that. It's two and a black (laughs) for an artifact. Whenever an elf you control dies, exile it, and then you can pay two life until end of turn you may cast a creature spell from among cards exiled with Serpent's Soul Jar. So what do you guys think about this one? It's, It's nice that it's not a replacement effect. Um, yeah so notably like it if it was a replacement effect it would be more like whenever an elf or if an elf you control would die exile it instead um so you still get death triggers which is a plus Mm -hmm. but of course it's it's slow right like you're tapping so slow paying two life and uh casting a, a creature spell like i think i'd rather have the elves in the bin and have some um, like reanimation spells, like mass reanimation spells that care yep. about yeah, creature types death. and focus more on that kind of strategy yeah. than yeah. than rather like this incremental strategy. Yeah, that's that's definitely how I feel too. I just it feels uh it feels slow and, and risky. Yeah, because yeah, like, of course if if somebody blows this up then you're kind of out of luck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and they're just gone. Yeah, I would even I would even take this out for that uh mythic that we got in Kaldheim. Oh yeah, a uh, haunting mm-hmm. voyage, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Definitely. Yeah, I think that yeah, would be that would be perfect. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, this just feels so slow, and you're like, and then if somebody removes this, you're like, oh, I got two of my eight elves back. Feels good, and now the rest are exiled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next up, we have uh, well, last up, we have Wolverine Riders. It's four green green for a four four elf warrior. At the beginning of each upkeep, create a one one green elf warrior creature token. Whenever another elf enters the battlefield under your control, you gain life equal to its toughness. Um, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not super high on this card, but uh, I'm, I want to know what you guys think about it. Uh, each upkeep, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Each upkeep snipes. Yeah. And then having some aristocrat synergies or or even just having your commander caring about the amount of elves you have, like that's going to make Lathrol a pretty reasonable threat pretty quickly. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, one turn cycle, including this elf, we now have five elves. That crown of Skemfar gives something plus five plus five. <laughs> and five life. And five life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're almost there for the... Uh... The Lathril's activated ability, for sure. All right, so those are the new cards from Elven Empire. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the um, the financial value of this deck. You know, just anything we haven't already talked about. I already mentioned that this deck is a little less pricey if you buy the singles. Not much. Um, I think this deck has... Um, 
Yeah, like the um the biggest one will be like Reese the Exiled. Which was a very which was a very solid reprint. I mean it is a good reprint and it did do what we want reprints to do, which was um lower the value of a card, lower the price of a card significantly. Uh and it did that because it was in the double digits when this uh deck was spoiled, right? And now uh on Goldfish it's three sixty two. Yeah. Um the other one is the uh it's one of the spells, the Elvish Promenade. Oh yeah, three and a green to Prom promenade. tribal sorcery elf. So you can you can tutor it up if you're looking for an elf. Um, create a one one green elf warrior creature token for each elf you control. Uh, you know, I bet I bet I'll, a fair swath of the English speaking population does say promenade. You know, it's like it's like people that say a a, like a. Uh, my mom says like avocado funny. She hits the A. She hits this. <laughs> Avocado. Yeah, she hits the second A like like Keato. Um, but otherwise, she you know she speaks. Uh, you know she sounds like us. Like we don't really have accents. We just kind of sound like yeah. we just kind of sound like regular. I guess I don't know. We're like you know it's like when you order a a black coffee or something. It's just kind of regular. I'm not sure. I don't know where I'm going with this. Uh, <laughs> black coffee and regular are different things too. <laughs> oh, is is what's what's regular coffee? One and one. Uh, it's yeah, oh, one cream. Wow, one I didn't, I yeah. didn't know that. That's probably that's like Tim Horton's heresy not to know that. I imagine. Yeah, what kind of Canadian <laughs> are you? I guess not a very good one. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Tim, Tim Horton's has kind of gone downhill, in my opinion. Oh, Tim Horton. Yeah, no, it's bad. It's pretty, pretty trash. Yep. <laughs> Fight me. <laughs> Come at me. <laughs> We're Canadian. We don't like Tim Hortons. <laughs> come at me yeah um <laughs> they still they still got some good donuts but yeah the coffee is not what it used to be oh that's too bad that's not what you want um so yeah what uh i have a list here of the uh the kind of better reprints or the the higher value reprints like we have like elvish arch druid marwin the nurturer I already mentioned reese uh beast whisperer is nice but again that's another one that, yeah. that is getting reprinted in time spiral remastered uh beautiful old border right there uh poison tip mm -hmm. archer was a card I, I had never heard of wirewood wirewood channeler mm -hmm. harvest season is a good one um and of course soul ring and arcane signet and i'm just gonna read poison tip archer uh in case any i think that was from m20 anyone's in the same boat yeah. as me i remember i remember drafting that um yeah well, it was above a dollar when I put this list together, so maybe just disregard that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, like I said, I th I think our, uh, like this deck has been hit a lot harder by the uh, by the reprints because it's it's the f it's the far more popular deck. Elves have an extremely deep bench, and you can really do you can really do a lot with elves. But there really hasn't been a uh, you know we we did get some Golgari elves in commander legends and we got more in call time obviously and then you know th this uh this commander precon but um we've had uh elf commanders before golgari elf commanders to build around but um you know i think this is the first time that it's that it's been really to build around for a really reliable commander the one i'm thinking of is um uh what is it called? There, there was a elf uh, Gugari well, that I built around. Yeah, I mean, like Reese the Exiled is 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 um, one. <laughs> I, I I built around uh, Savra, Queen of the Golgari, who was an elf shaman two two. Uh, whenever you sacrifice a black creature, you may pay two life. If you do, each other player sacks a creature, and whenever you sack a green creature, you gain two life. Not exactly like elf. <laughs> synergies yeah. but uh she just happens to be an elf <laughs> she just happens to be an elf <laughs> yeah and i think the one that i'm thinking of is an elf but um doesn't really care about elves i think reese is the only golgari one previously that that actually cares about elves but um yeah you know it's not it's, i don't think it's nearly as game winning as uh as lathril is this deck also has a second commander that we can choose mm, you mean reese yeah a reese, few reese the redeemed Reese the Exile. <laughs> a few. Well, I, actually, a few. We should say a few. Um, yeah. The the one I actually really like is the Abomination of Llanowar. Mm -hmm. So this guy's one of anything, a black and a green for a star star. It has Vigilance and Menace. And its power and toughness are each equal to the number of elves you control, plus the number of elf cards in your graveyard. 
Okay. That's kind of a, like a Voltron-y thing. Yeah. yeah. And then there's also partner commanders, uh, Miara and Numa. Miara being uh, one in a black, one two legendary elf scout. When she or another elf you control dies, you may pay one and pay one life. And if you do draw a card, and then Numa is uh, two in a green, two two elf warrior. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may pay XX. When you do distribute X plus one plus one counters among any number of target elves. Yeah, Numa's definitely a really good mana sink. Yeah, like I was I was building a deck, a Golgari Elves deck before the, <laughs> this came out with uh, uh, Miara and Numa, but still haven't finished it. The, the land package in this deck also looks a little bit cleaner. Maybe it's just because there are more basic lands, but um, you know, they also threw the Path of Ancestry in here, which is a very decent card in, in tribal decks. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, you know, I I think I think it's on par with the other deck. I think there are just fewer um, non basics. Sorry, before we move on, do, are there any other? Uh, are there any? Uh, it's nice yeah. that we got. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's the new Kaldheim card, so we did get the um, Binding of the Old Gods. That's some decent removal, and then it ramps us after it removes something. Uh, Casualties of War is a big favorite. Uh, yeah. Two of anything, two black, two green. Choose one or more. Destroy target artifact, creature, enchantment, land, planeswalker. Yeah, that is uh that is a very good removal spell. Do you oh right, it's choose one or more, so it's like a it's like an yeah. updated version of um what's that card? Um Decimate. You know how like Decimate you have to you, you have to have uh you have to fulfill each target. And then um Harvest season, uh, if we do have a good situation, we may get like a ton of lands on the battlefield. Harvest season is a pretty good uh, ramp card when we have a deck like the Elves deck. Oh, yeah, you can really thin out your decks after uh, after an attack or after a Lathril activation. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good point. Uh, and, and then uh, don't sleep on this card, but uh, the Cultivator of Blades uh, can be pretty scary. So it's three of anything and two green. It has Fabricate 2. It's just a 1-1. One, one. Uh, whenever Cultivator Blades attacks, you may have other attacking creatures get plus X plus X until end of turn where X is Cultivator Blades power. So if we've pumped it up somehow, say with Numa, or we've thrown like the Crown of Skemfar on there, all of our elves, you know, could be getting like plus eight plus eight or something. Yeah, no kidding. That is uh that's a lot. Uh, oh, you know what? Um, on that same note, I also liked seeing uh, Andre's Forerunners in here. It's sort of like a a, r- Ooh, a really yes. watered down uh, Crater Hoof Behemoth, but it's uh, it's it's five green, green, <laughs> green for a seven, seven with Vigilance, Trample, and Haste. When Enray's Forerunners enters the battlefield, other creatures you can control get plus two, plus two, and gain Vigilance and Trample until end of turn. So, like that's really nice with Lathril because all your creatures get Vigilance, and if you have enough Elves to activate her, you can attack and then. Um, you know, activate or not, not right after you attack, of course, but you just, you, you can leave it up, uh, up, up until the, the end step before your next turn. Yeah. That's actually, uh, it's actually really mm-hmm. nice. Uh, I like Enray's Forerunners cause it is just like, um, a budget, uh, creator hoof. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and like, uh, to offset some of the power, it's, it's cool that they also gave all the creatures vigilance. Mm-hmm. Cause then, especially like, as you said, Lathro is really good, but even in other situations with the deck, you're able to swing out and then you still have like your defenses up and mm-hmm. stuff as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Just, just being prepared for the, the crack back is, is, is always nice. Yeah. Alrighty. Yeah. So a good, uh, if we were doing like an upgrade, not a budget upgrade, but just a regular upgrade, uh, I think Crater Hoof would be a solid include in this deck. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, even like as far as upgrades go, I would probably focus first on on uh, like the one drop elves that you could include in the deck. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no Lanor elves, there's no like Arbor Arbor elf or anything or like that. Or Finhorn so, elves, which was just reprinted, right? No, or is it in here? Yeah. yeah. No, it's just Elvish Mystic yeah. and Jesper Sentinel, yeah. which Pre- Jesper Sentinel is nothing really special. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like a Priest of Titania would be fantastic in this deck. Oh, oh yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah, so much uh so much early game ramp, get Lathral out even sooner. Um there's even um 
Mm-hmm. Elves of uh, Elves of Deep Shadow, which taps for a black, that would be great in here. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Or um, Boreal Druid. It's another one drop elf. Yeah. Taps for colorless. Mm-hmm. Definitely snow colorless. Snow colorless, That's right, baby. Exactly. Ooh. <laughs> Make it, they're making <laughs> snow great again. Uh, okay, so how do you guys feel about th- this deck out of the box? Do you think it's on par with the Azorius deck? It's probably on par. Yeah. Um, it has a lower curve from the looks of it uh, and has like creatures as its ramp package, which is it, it's fine. Like it seems like it's it's pretty good out of the box and it wouldn't take a lot of money to upgrade the ramp package like i said like including some of those classic one drop elves would would take it up a notch Mm -hmm. um but yeah again it's a good entry point and i think that's exactly what they're going for with this product so yeah 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 i think you might um just for that little bit lower mana curve than what the other deck was showing uh might be a little bit nicer because then we still have the elves that can uh some elves still in here generate mana as well so Oh wow. <laughs> Voice of Many is in here. <laughs> what a stupid card. <laughs> uh perfect. It's just made for commander. Um yeah, like I don't you know, I um I've had an elf deck for, for quite a few years and um you know, I don't know if I'd wanna convert it to a, a Golgari deck at this point. I kinda like I kinda like Azuri. I think I have a real soft spot for monocolor decks um but Mm -hmm. uh you know if i was gonna pick between the two of these you know to just just grab one and and play with it and and upgrade it and it you know maybe maybe it becomes part of my collection of decks um you know at this point i'm more interested in the azorius deck just because i think it's the the road less traveled Mm -hmm. for me anyways what i agree yeah yeah i agree with that because like i mean elves it's tried and true. There's there's tons of different iterations of Elves deck out there, and I, I feel like the Fort, Fortel deck is a little bit more unique and, and definitely something I'd be interested in exploring a little bit more. Um, so yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah, and there's also more directions you can go in too, like it, with the um, in terms of what the commander will will let you do. Um, you know, you you can do the Fortel thing, but you know, you also have the um, that second static ability on that commander that cares about um, exiling cards from your hand and permanents from the battlefield. With Lathril, it's more like mm-hmm. make elves, kill people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is fun. Which is which is fun. You know, it's just yeah. It's just it's that's, it's, that's magic. Yeah, it's very <laughs> it's uh it's it's very straightforward. And I think for a new player, I would recommend the elf deck more because it is very straightforward. Yeah, I, I think so. Mm-hmm. I think the elf deck would be a, a solid place to start for a new player. Yeah, I mean both. Honestly, both are fine. Yeah. But I think I, I, think, I think both. El- yeah, elves like the elves care about uh, a little bit more about attacking. So I think that's generally like a safer space to start for new players. Well, Christmas is coming, so if you have uh, if you have a a, a, nie- <laughs> or a niece or a nephew. <laughs> Uh, you what know, the? pick up pick up one of these for him, or ch- or <laughs> maybe it's your child. I don't know. Christmas is coming. Your grandchild? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what kind of time frame Kevin lives in. <laughs> well, but... e- Easter's right around. Easter's the corner, Easter's you know. coming. There. there we go. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah. So I guess I got my months mixed up. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think uh, I think oh, I think boy. with that we can we can wrap things up here today. Um, yeah, I definitely like these. Uh, I think these decks I like the most so far out of the. Yeah, I, these kind of products. And I think, t- I, yeah, out of the the new way they've structured them. Yeah. And I, th- yeah, and I think, I think so. together they're they're very good because you know with the Zendikar decks, I feel like the Rogue deck was far and above more interesting, and a lot more. Uh, I don't want to say it was better, but it kind of, I, you know, not having played with the decks, just looking at the deck list, I, it seemed like a, a, a better deck, more synergistic deck. The reprints were definitely better in that deck. Um, and then the Commander Legends deck, you know, I think the Lands deck, certainly the Commander was much more powerful than the Boros Commander. The, the, the Commander was quite bold. Yeah, and um, 
but with these decks, I feel like they're you know they're they're sort of um, on the same page. So I you know I um, I don't know if this is a ghost of things to come with this kind of product, but I hope it is because like you know when you when you're buying two decks as a set, you know I think you want them. The idea is that you're going to take them out of the box and play them against each other, kind of like a dual deck kind of thing. Um, yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I I like where they're going with this product. I'm also super thrilled. Like I said at the top of the show, that we're also getting our normal um, five deck set of commander decks. I'm also um, very excited about that. Whatever they may be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I think I think they're probably going to be based around the the colleges. Yeah. Right? So they're going to be the uh, um, enemy colors, enemy color combinations. Yes, yeah. the, the yeah. schools, so, yeah. Riley. Mm -hmm. schools? schools? Sorry. I thought they were colleges. <sighs> <sighs> yeah, actually. Well, actually. Uh, so <laughs> we're going to bring this episode to a close. Uh, do let us know in the comment section below what your thoughts on these decks were and the new cards in them are. Um, we will, of course, be back next week. And until then, uh, be safe out there, and thanks for listening. Uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for listening, everybody. everybody. It was really fun. All right. Talk to you later. Goodbye. Bye now. Yeah, it's Strixhaven School of Mages. Okay. Yeah. You're a freaking <laughs> school of mages. <laughs> oh. Turn one soul ring.